everyone. Welcome to History on Trial. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. We're going to turn our attention back to ADOS and the issue of proof of facts. A number of dynamics are going on with respect to the reparations discussion, and it's important to revisit uh, some of the things that we discussed before. Now, there has been a substantial amount of material covered with respect to reparations, truth study, uh, truth commission, uh, reparation study, uh, the issue of standing, uh, issues related to distractions. And so there are a number of issues that have been covered over the past few years related to reparations uh, here in our discussions. And if you need to, you can go back and uh, revisit some of those uh, discussions, starting with the 1619 video. That's probably one of the most important uh, video discussions. Um, at any rate, we're going to be looking at the issue of proof of facts, and we're going to be getting a better understanding of uh, the way you might look at some of the issues that were brought up in the uh, two polls that were taken. Now, there are a number of geopolitical issues that are going on right now that uh, create a dynamic where the uh, discussion about reparations it doesn't have a rosy picture in terms of a rosy future that rosy future is not uh, there and if you don't know what those geopolitical issues are that are going on it's incumbent upon you to take some time and start doing some research about the geopolitical realities uh, that we are dealing with right now and that we will likely be dealing with going forward and so some of those issues uh, serve to derail the entire reparations discussion and so again it's important for you to be aware of that so again we're going to go over those polls then we're going to go over the issue of proof of facts and this is an important issue to discuss and so we're going to be revisiting that issue of standing uh, because again uh, if people are moving forward with the reparations discussion there's a way that that forward movement needs to take place and uh, a number of things that are going on are are really sidetracking any forward movement and so you really have to sort of move those conversations to the side and stay focused on what you need to stay focused on and also make sure that the individuals who are uh, best positioned to speak uh, actually are those who are speaking and we'll talk about uh, who those individuals might be uh, as we get into that okay so now we're going to cover the poll that we took related to HR 40 and it is a decades old reparation study resolution and so the question basically is given political history current global realities macro agendas and local implications is the expectation of a forthcoming federal level ados reparation study still well founded and so the question is is the expectation well founded that there will be a forthcoming federal level ADOS reparations study. So the majority of individuals said, yes, the expectations are still well-founded. And then 28% uh, indicated that these expectations were not still well-founded. And then 21% indicated that they did not know. And based upon a number of issues that are going on and a number of political dynamics that are going on not just on the local and national level but on the global level um, these expectations are likely not well founded and also if you recall what took place on capitol hill with respect to the discussions about a reparation study uh, that gives you an indication as to the extent to which there is serious consideration of a reparation study or whether this is just some sort of lip service and so it definitely appears based upon behaviors 
uh, it appears to be simply lip service. There does not appear to be any real effort uh, towards having a reparation study, which would basically be a truth commission. You would need a truth commission in order to go forward. Let me tell you why you need a truth commission. One of the things that will come out is that individuals don't have the ancestry that they think they do. Uh, some of the ancestry that people believe they have, they may be able to validate that. Some of the ancestry that people think they have, they may not be able to validate it. And another issue is that with a truth commission, uh, you can get to the truth about uh, the ancestries of individuals. And then you can know better who actually has standing and start to talk about what that standing should look like. Who should have standing, who should not have standing. Uh, you'll be able to better articulate that. And so if individuals don't have standing, then those individuals need to sort of move to the side and allow those who do have standing to have the ultimate uh, voices in this discussion. And right now that's not what's happening because there hasn't been a truth commission, there hasn't been a truth study to find out exactly what is the historical truth. And so individuals are focusing on all sorts of scholarship coming out of economics, coming out of politics, coming out of history. And the most important scholarship is ancestry scholarship. You have to be able to link back to someone who was actually enslaved. And we're going to talk about that. Now let's address this second poll. The second poll basically says, should American slavery descendant reparations be distinct from Jim Crow and other reparations classes? Explain why or why not? And those of you who've been tuning in for a while now, you know that the answer is, the best answer is yes. And that the reparations classes should be as distinct as possible. And the uh, distinction of American slavery descendant reparations from the Jim Crow reparations really cleans up that reparations class very well. It makes it very, very tidy, uh, takes out a lot of loopholes and other issues. And so you have 90% of individuals voting indicated that yes, the reparations classes should be distinct, uh, no one voted for all reparations classes should be joined and then 10 percent said that they were not sure one of the things you are cautioned about is this idea of race based reparations you will hear people talk about this because this sounds like a logical thing uh, that you had a race of people who were enslaved and that uh, the discussions about reparations should be based upon race uh, basing a discussion about reparations on race as the sole factor is going to be problematic and also you're going to run into some legal loopholes uh, that might make this legally impossible uh, because of all sorts of uh, potential illegalities um, and so it's not the way to go and it's best to uh, keep it on the sidelines it can be a sidebar conversation but it should not be the central focus of a discussion on reparations. And we'll talk about why. Okay, so this brings us right back to that discussion on standing. There is nothing more important to the discussion uh, than standing. And so this is the most important thing to get before going anywhere else with these discussions. The focus needs to be on actual descendants. And so therefore lineage is everything. Uh, it doesn't matter what skin color the person has now. It doesn't matter how the person is classifying themselves. It doesn't matter what ethnicity a person wants to go by. It doesn't matter what last name a person has adopted or maintains. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is standing. And in this case, actual 
descendancy. That means that the person who is seeking reparations, the class of people, the group of people who are seeking reparations, they can all prove substantially that there was an enslaved person in their family and that they are a descendant of that uh, person who was enslaved in the former territory that is currently known as the United States of America or in the United States of America. And so first of all, the slavery status has to be substantiated. There was someone who was actually enslaved in chattel slavery uh, or in a form of chattel slavery under the guise of involuntary servitude or indentured servitude. And we've talked about how that also took place. And so the individual needs to be able to prove that either via blood or adoption that they are uh, descended from an enslaved person, a person who was enslaved. And they also need to prove that they actually qualify as an heir to the enslaved person. Another important thing to consider is that there are a number of people who are uh, taking on all sorts of positions and positioning themselves as uh, leaders and giving themselves all sorts of titles, um, those very interesting titles, um, prime minister, president, things like that. Um, the issue is about the descendant class. It's not about whether someone's in a particular tribe or they're in a particular quote unquote nation that has been created. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is standing. So the only thing that matters is that slavery and then that descendancy. And those who are presenting themselves as the representatives or the voices or the mouthpieces, they need to be able to prove actual descendancy not in the future. They need to be putting it on the table now. They need to be putting up charts, genograms, legal documents showing that they are actually positioned to serve as a voice. So they need to show that they have an ancestor who was enslaved and they are the actual descendant of that individual. This is extremely important. And so to allow people to continue talking when they do not have that established and publicly established uh, is a mistake because you really don't know who's talking and you don't really know who is representing what. Now, this is only part of the issue because you can still have individuals who are descendants, they have an enslaved ancestor, and they still might not be the best person to be representing the interests of those who are seeking reparations or seeking a discussion, a study about reparations. Uh, however, those individuals would fit in that class. And that is the most important thing going forward. And so uh, scholarship is great from academics. It's great to have all sorts of books and articles, but the most important thing is going to be establishing that standing. And if that cannot be established, then none of the other discussions matter. They do not matter. Um, another thing that needs to be uh, taken into consideration because this comes up quite a bit about the classification of the individual. Um, you also want to toss that out because when you're talking about standing, the only thing that matters is lineage. Again, it does not matter uh, how they are classifying themselves or whether they refer to themselves as African American or they refer to themselves as black or Negro or their ancestors refer to themselves in, in that way. Um, because you are talking about a lineage, lineage dynamic and the focus needs to stay on that. And as soon as you get sidetracked from that and you start thinking about all of these other issues, it muddies the water substantially. Um, it would be best that you wouldn't have that muddying where someone is a descendant of an enslaver and an enslaved. But when you think about the arguments that are being made for reparations in the first place, one of the issues is that individuals are descended from both enslavers and the enslaved. And so 
that's something to take into consideration when thinking about the reparations issue and the issue of standing. And so that means that all ethnic classifications might be included. Um, and so you might have a, a number of individuals who are classifying in, in many ways, um, but that has no bearing on whether or not someone was their grandparent. Another thing that needs to be taken out of the uh, equation and put on the sidelines are religious affiliations. Uh, religious affiliations are not relevant to this issue of reparations. And so that needs to be sidelined. Another thing that has taken center stage, and it needs to definitely be moved to the, uh, the margins there, is the racial wealth gap discussion. It's an important discussion. However, it really doesn't have anything to do with standing. And so you can have a racial wealth gap that has nothing to do with slavery. You have racial wealth gaps in countries where there was never slavery. And so that cannot be the foundation of a reparations argument that's related to being descended from someone who was enslaved. The focus needs to stay on the descendancy. It needs to stay on that lineage class and issues, even though the issues are important, things like uh, incarceration, that's important, but that really has nothing to do with standing. It is a side tracking issue. Uh, the wealth gap related to race, that is another side tracking issue. It's important and it's informing, but it is not the foundation of the claim. And so going forward, uh, individuals who are serious about advancing these types of claims, uh, they need to be very conscious about those who are speaking for them, uh, what people are actually speaking about, and what the claim actually is that they are trying to advance. And then making sure that they are with like-minded people, that they are all on the same page. Um, those individuals who are on social media having debates about these issues are perhaps not the best people to advance the discussion um, in terms of the national agenda. And so if individuals are on social media with uh, multiple panels, having multiple discussions about uh, things other than the actual claim, then it's going to eventually be problematic. It's not going to serve the purpose uh, of actually advancing the reparations claim. And so these are some things to consider in terms of tightening up the process and actually uh, getting something substantial on the table at the federal level. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.